2-8, proportions and similar figures. So our objective for this lesson is to find missing lengths and similar figures and to use similar figures when measuring indirectly. Our essential understanding is that we can use proportions to find missing side length, lengths and similar figures. Such figures can help you measure weird, real world distances indirectly. Okay. So we're going to be taking what we did last section with proportions and introduce the concept of similarity. You will use this very often next year in geometry. Okay, so let's take a look at similar diagrams and similar figures. So we have this symbol right there, okay, a little squiggly line. Okay, that symbol means is similar to. So in the diagram, triangle ABC is similar to triangle FGH. Okay, so we have ABC is similar to FGH. And that's an important thing when you're naming geometric figures is both of my names have to go in the same direction and that means angle A is similar to angle F, angle B, G, C, and H. Okay, so all the things should match up. Okay, it also means that in these similar figures, the measures of corresponding angles are equal, which I just said, and corresponding side lengths are in proportion. So angles equal, side lengths not necessary equally, because obviously 8 is not equal to 12, right? But they are in proportion, which means the order of the letters when you name similar figures is important because it tells you which part of the figures are corresponding parts. So because ABC is similar to FGH, the following is true. A is congruent to F, B is congruent to G, and C is congruent to H. And that symbol right there means is congruent to. So when we deal with numbers, we say that something like 3 is equal to 3. Right? But when we deal with lengths inside of geometric figures, we use the congruent to symbol like that. Okay? And my ratios are equal. So if you look at AB, this piece right here, over FG, that piece right there, that ratio is going to be equal to any other two that match up, like AC over FH, okay, or BC over GH. So any of the ratios of corresponding sides are equal to each other, okay? So let's take a look at a problem. Finding the lengths of a side. In the diagram, triangle ABC is congruent to DEF. So that goes this way now, ABC, DEF. What is DE? So I want to know this side right here. Okay, to start this problem, that's the side I need. That's the side it matches up with. So we can say x over 10 is equal to. Now, this side doesn't help me. AC doesn't help me because I don't know how big AC is. So this 18 can't help me at all. Okay, well, I'll put an x there. But So that means that these two sides are the ones that can help me. Make sure you put the same triangle on top both times or on the bottom both times so we're going to put that x over 10 x over 10 is equal to 12 over 16. now we have my proportion now all we have to do is cross multiply and divide so that's 16 x is equal to 120. divide both sides by 16 and I get x is equal to 7.5, which is a. Okay? Let's look at our gata problem. Use the same figures again. What is now? We're going to solve for ac. Okay, so that's my variable. So let's start with the smaller triangle this time. So let's go 18 over x. That over that. Actually, we started with a small triangle last time. It doesn't matter. Equals 
Now, here are two sides that match up. Okay, just make sure the same thing goes on the top. So 12 over 16. If I wanted to set this up the other way, that would be x over 16. Sorry, x over 18 is equal to 16 over 12. That over that is equal to this over this. Okay, and either way, you're going to get the same thing. So cross multiply. We have 18 times 16. That gives me 288 is equal to 12x. Divide both sides by 12. And we're left with 24. So x is equal to 24. Now, you always make sure your answer makes sense. Okay, this happens to be the biggest side. It is the biggest number. And it is bigger than this one because this triangle is bigger than that one. So everything makes sense. Okay. We can also use proportions to solve indirect measurement problems like finding a distance using a map. You can use similar figures and proportions to find lengths that you cannot measure directly. Okay. Like for instance, this guy right here, or this girl, sorry, who is standing next to a building. So the sun's rays strike the building and the girl at the same angle forming two similar triangles. How tall is the building? Okay, if you know how far away from the building you are standing and how tall you are and how tall your shadow is, a lot of things to know, but you can figure out the length of the building. Much easier to measure something on the ground and something small like this than trying to figure out how tall the building is going up to the top of the building with a tape measure. Okay, so now we have x over here over that matches up with the height of the girl is equal to 15 over 3. So that's 3x is equal to 75. Divide both sides by 3 and we get that x is equal to 25 feet. Does that make sense? Well, looks like it, right? Looks like this angle is bigger than this one, and that, so this side should be bigger than that side. Okay. Let's look at another. A man who is six feet tall is standing next to a flagpole. The shadow of the man is three, so let's, let's do this. So we have a flagpole, okay, and we got a guy. The shadow of the man, all right, first of all, this guy is six feet, always helps to draw a picture. The flagpole is 17.5 feet. Okay. The shadow of the man is 3.5 feet. And the shadow of the flagpole is, oh, sorry, that is the shadow of the flagpole. 17.5. That's what we're looking for, the height of the flagpole. Okay? So, terrible drawing, I know, but we can still use it to solve this problem. Uh, let's set up our proportion. So, we want x over 6 is equal to height of the flagpole, height of the, height of the guy, is equal to 17.5 over 3.5. So, that's 3.5x. It's okay to get decimals. 17.5 times 6 gives me 105. Divide out the 3.5. And we get 30 feet. Does your answer make sense? Yeah, looks like it, right? So the height of the flagpole is going to be a little bit bigger because the guy is bigger than his shadow. Okay, so my answer makes sense. Okay. Next, we can talk about scale drawings. So a scale drawing is a drawing that is similar to an actual object or place, like a house floor or a building floor plan, blueprints, and maps are all examples of scale drawings. In a scale drawing, the ratio of any length on the drawing to the actual length is always the same. This ratio is called the scale. Okay. 
And if you ever see on a map or a problem that says not to scale, then this doesn't actually work. But usually most maps, especially real ones, are going to use some sort of scale. Okay. So what's the actual distance from Jacksonville to Orlando? Okay. And if we look, right, these bigger tick marks, if you remember how a ruler works, that's half, so that's a quarter. So this is going to be one and a quarter, let's use decimals, 1.25 inches from Jacksonville to Orlando. And one inch is equal to 110 miles. Okay, so we have... 1.25, how many miles is that? Equal to my scale, one inch is 110 miles. So that's inches, inches, and that's miles. Cross multiply, and we get 1.25 times 110 gives me 137.5, and that's equal to x. Okay, so it is 137.5 miles to from Jacksonville to Orlando, according to this particular scale on this map. The distance from Jacksonville to Gainesville is 0.6 inches. And if we use the same scale factor, that one inch is 110 miles, we would solve this the same way. 0 .6, 0 0.6 inches on the map is how many miles? Okay, so now I just go 110 times 0 0.6, and that gives me that x is equal to 66 miles. If you know that the actual distance between the two cities is 250, and the cities are two inches apart, how can you find the scale on the map? Well, we can set up my ratio 2 to 250 okay but now you might not know either one here but doesn't it make sense to figure out how far one inch is okay that would be a good scale usually comparing one something to something else so now here we get 2x is equal to 250 which means that x is equal to 170 or 125 whoops x is equal to 125. Okay, so my scale will be 1 inch to 125 miles. Okay? So, besides a scale drawing, we can also have a scale model. And this is a three-dimensional model that is similar to a three-dimensional object. The ratio of the linear measurement of the model to the corresponding linear measurement of the actual object is always the same. This ratio is still called the scale. It didn't change. Okay. So now we have the model of a heart in a museum, something like Liberty Science Center. But that's not from there. Okay. So a giant model heart is shown below. The heart is the ideal size for a person who is 170 feet tall. About what size would you expect the heart of a man who is 6 feet tall to be? Well, we know that the height of the giant heart is 14 feet over the height of the man is X equals the height of the person with this giant heart would be 170 and the height of this guy is six feet okay cross multiply 170 x is equal to 14 times 6 which is 84 divide by 170 and it's okay to get decimals and we get 0.49 about okay? uh feet so We now know that the height is about 0.49 feet, and if we change that to inches, it is going to be about 5.9 inches. And that answer makes sense, right? 
5.9 inches if you think about how that big that is, and a six foot guy. That's about how tall your heart should be. A scale model of a building is six inches tall. The scale of the model is one inch to 50 feet. So the scale is six inches. How big is the real building? And my conversion here is one inch, it's 50 feet. So six times 50 gives me 300 is equal to X. So the building is 300 feet tall. Okay? So let's make sure we understand everything in this lesson, right? So for here, we can use a photocopy to enlarge a drawing of a right triangle with a base of 13 and a height of 7. The enlarged triangle has a height of 17.5. And, right, if we draw this out, here's my first right triangle with a base of 13 and a height of 7. My second right triangle, which is going to be a little bigger, has a height of 17.5. Okay, and now I can set up my proportion 17 over 17.5 equals 13 over X. Okay, and then I could figure out the scale of this enlargement by setting this ratio equal to 1 over something. Okay, scale of a map is 1 centimeter, 75 kilometers. What is the actual distance between town and two towns? We can set that up by, let's get rid of this. We can set that up by saying 1 over 75 is equal to 3 over x and solve that. Vocabulary, suppose triangle MNP is similar to triangle RST. How can you identify the corresponding parts? M is similar to R and S, P, T, and then draw it out and any two, any two things that are next to each other are going to be similar to each other. So NP is similar to ST, MN to RS, and MP to RT, or backwards. Suppose triangle ABC is similar to TUV. Determine whether each pair of measures is equal. A and T, yeah, look, they're in the same place. The perimeters of the two triangles, absolutely not, because these two triangles are not congruent, they are just similar. If it said congruent like that, then the two perimeters would be equal. The ratio of size BC, that's these two, and UV, okay, those match up, that's good. AC, TV, yeah, those match up, those are good. And finally, the ratio of a, the scale of a map is 1 to 100, is the actual distance between the two towns 100 times the map distance between the two towns, okay? Uh, no. It is greater than 100 times since 100 miles is more than 100 times as great as one inch. Okay, one inch to 100 miles is much more. Okay, so just be careful with the units when you're talking about scale. Okay, and that is 2.8 proportions and similar figures.